what is the essentials for a short enough packing list? Well, it's quite an important question because we are in the middle of the wilderness. We fly out here with helicopter. It's good to have a smart list of stuff that you need to bring. I thought quite a lot about that. And today I'm gonna share my thoughts on what you should bring for a fishing week here. It is a maximum weight as well on the helicopter of 20 kilos. So I will at the end of this video also scale it and see where we end up because I haven't checked that beforehand. So on top of my list, we see how much space there is for, for uh, the stuff you also want to bring. <laughs> so let's get into it. Something that is important is to have a pair of wading boots and they should be without studs. Studs are not allowed in Shonayok. That is due to the spikes. They damage a lot the uh, floors in the restaurant and in the cabins and so. So it's not good. And also in the boats, the, the boats take really bad damage out of the studs. So please bring some wedding boots that does not have any studs. Appreciate that a lot. <laughs> so moving over to waders with the wading belt, simply having some good piece of waders that go all the way up. I think it's essential to have. There is also backup waders here. If your waders start leaking, we have some, some that you can borrow, uh, of course. So you don't have to have multiple uh, ones, but to have your own that is in a good fit, that is probably a smart idea to have. I would also say that a wading stick is a must. I use it actually all the time. It is quite slippery when walking around in the river and it can ruin a day completely if you fall in. So a good wading stick, if you haven't tried the carbon wading sticks, almost every brand have, have it nowadays. They are so light, they're so good. You don't barely think about them when you're not needing them. And when you need them, when they're made of carbon fiber, be a little bit gentle so you don't bend it or put your whole weight onto them. But otherwise, they're fantastic. They're so nice. Here I have my stack of clothes on top of what I already wear. The casual clothing is a really thick pair of socks. This is the, the ones from Gulf. They are super awesome wading socks. They're made as wading socks. And they're really tough. They haven't, I have had these for two years now. They haven't worn out. I think they're so comfortable. But uh, some warm socks, it's important to have. A beanie, no matter if you come in July or August, it can at any point be cold. So to have a warm beanie, I definitely recommend. And then there is just some extra clothing. We are far up in North, so to have warm clothing and extra dry clothes, I think is important. Fleece pants, uh, Prima Loft jacket, for example. That's something I always have with me, even out at the river. And some kind of wading jacket. So, yeah, robust wading jacket is a must to have. And this should always be with you. If you have a clear blue sky, no wind day, still bring the wading jacket out, in, out for the fishing. The mountain weather is unpredictable and can change at any point. And it can be quite chilly when we drive with a boat as well. So if we do a longer trip, it is important to have this available so you can put it on. And where do I store this? Well, I have that in a waterproof backpack. And it's great to have a waterproof backpack because we are trans we're transporting around with a boat, so it can always be some water laying around. So to, um, to have one that is waterproof is awesome. So you can store your dry clothing and your other small stuff that you want to bring. It's really good. What do we have left here? Well, we have a chest pack with some uh, essentials some tippet materials, some leaders, pliers, nippers, floatants, fly boxes with flies, of course, 
Uh, I made a separate video about what everything I have inside this chest pack. I'll leave it a link in the video description. A good sized net, I think it's really good. This is the Nymphomaniac vision net. It's the best I've ever used for, for the fishing here. You can net a big trout in this and uh, grayling sits perfectly in this. I like the modern style nets that are a bit oversized. They are incredible. It is like a little bathtub for the fish. So you have a long time for you if you want to prepare for a photo or so. It's just standing there happily in the water and uh, you can take your time. So oversized nets I feel is the way to go. In the end here I have magnets I can attach to anywhere. It's a strong magnet. It should be easy to um, access the net because you catch a lot of fish in this river actually. My, my net magnet is attached like this. Another neat thing to bring can be to have a battery bank. It's not all the cabins that have charging. So if you want to charge your phone, for example, in the evenings in your cabin, um, bring a little power bank. This is quite a big one. I can even charge my computer out of this. But uh, yeah, small one can be neat to have. You don't have to bring this. Now we come to the really nice to have, but you don't have to. Uh, but uh, yeah, a smaller power bank is probably better as well if you come on a flight to Kiruna. So this is perhaps a little bit oversized, but it's the one I have. If you don't bring a battery bank, it is fine. The phone is not working anyways, and you can charge it in the reception up here. But uh, yeah, as there, it's no reception here. The only way to access reception is up on the mountain that I have behind me here actually. Up, oh, it's, if I just, there, you have a mountain top. If you go to that, ooh, if you go to that top, you can find a uh, phone reception. <laughs> so it is possible, but uh, keep in mind that, yeah, it, it's not working here. So it's if you want to take some photos or whatever. So make sure to let your friends and family know that you're not reachable during this week. I feel like I want to mention this as well. It's absolutely not necessary, but it's very light. It doesn't weigh practically anything. And some guests feel like, oh man, these are so smart. Why didn't I bring that to Sean Eric? So I just want to mention it. This is a rod sock. So it's a, a, just a nylon tube that you thread over your rod or your rods. And it's just to protect your rod tips while in the transport in the boat and they don't tangle with other rods that your friends have or so. So putting all this in the pack. Okay, bear in mind now that I have fished yesterday so the wading boots is wet. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. See how much it actually weighs. Oh, there we go. So with one hand, it's a bit shaky, but quite exactly 10 kilos. Whew. And that is quite high, I would say, because there is some stuff in here and wading boots are wet and, and so on. So there should be plenty enough for space on the 20 kilos to fit some more of your personal things inside it. There, I didn't mention any rods or so because we made a separate videos about trout fishing, pike fishing, grayling fishing. Uh, I can't, sorry, I can't fit them all here, but uh, you find the, the, all three of them in the video description, or choose one of these two, the grayling or the trout. See you over there.